Big news. President Biden is reportedly considering ending the attempted prosecution of WikiLeaks co-founder Julian Assange. Julian Assange has been in prison in England for years and was held in an embassy before that. The U.S. has been trying to bring him to this country for prosecution, and uh, that effort might now finally be coming to an end. Biden making these comments the other day, uh, coming after the Australian government has actually asked Assange to return to that country, which is the country of his home origin. Yeah, so this came out uh, in a kind of press gaggle exchange. Biden uh, was shouted a question by a reporter during a meeting with the Japanese prime minister outside of the White House, um, asked about uh, pardoning Julian Assange, said, quote, we're considering it. So there have been moments where Biden kind of responds in those sorts of off-the-cuff exchanges and says things that are later walked back. So far, the Justice Department has declined to comment on Biden's remarks um, one way or the other, which you can read into one way or the other. Um, but certainly it is a glimmer of hope uh, at the end of a very long and arduous process uh, that Julian Assange might be free. Yeah, I, I think this is encouraging news. Um, and, and, you know, we want to see it from the government's perspective. I mean, here is Australia is an important ally of ours, uh, has asked for this uh, this prosecution to come to an end. Um, Biden could probably do himself a favor, frankly, if he let this go, because it is an issue that um, that irritates many of these progressives who are mad at him for a lot of other issues and frankly many republicans a and lot it makes of trump look terrible because yeah, trump was trump in the position do to do this and failed to do so. so he could he could get kind of an easy win and uh, you know assange has been again in prison has been kept in captivity captivity for years he has paid for if you think even if you think it was a crime now of course we in the of the civil liberties tradition would say that actually what julian assange was gained was uh, was involved in was Simply journalism. journalism. He did not steal that information. That information was given to him by uh, by Chelsea Manning, who obtained the information illicitly and has been pardoned or commuted or is no longer in prison because of that criminal um, act. What Assange did was no different than the New York Times or the Washington Post when classified materials come into their possession and they determine they were in the public interest, that they then share them so the public can know what its government is doing and what the government really thinks about these various national security issues. The government is so secretive from us, stops the American people from knowing what they really think about these issues. Um, so that is, that is no different. That is the project of journalism. It is not criminalized, cannot be criminalized. And, and the, the fact that they have tried to do this to Assange um, is really damning. It's actually the five-year anniversary today of Assange being arrested by um, the London police from the Ecuadorian embassy. The Nation wrote a piece today arguing that because of the anniversary, it's a good time, a good day, a good moment perhaps, a particularly auspicious moment, to go ahead and pardon Julian Assange. Um, and we certainly will update you on any news uh, on that front. It's also notable that Amnesty International Secretary Secretary General made a comment uh, saying the U.S. authorities are paving the way to a disastrous precedent for worldwide media freedom if Assange is extradited. The USA must drop all the charges against Assange, which will allow for his prompt release from U.K. state yes, custody. Yes, a, a range of voices have spoken out uh, about this on the left and right. Uh, Amnesty International, ACLU type people, uh, many uh, progressive uh, people have been very vocal, thankfully, on this. Um, some on the right, including Tucker Carlson. Um, I believe he had Pamela Anderson on his show mm -hmm. to talk about it back when Trump was still president and in a position to do something about this and did not, uh, which was a shame. I've had Ben uh, Cohen of Ben and Jerry on my show to talk about there this. Assange is a big issue for him as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it should be a big issue for everybody. It should be a big issue for, I wish it was a bigger issue for uh, mainstream journalists. I wish they talked about it more. They've, they've talked about it some, but it's important to keep the issue um, in the in front of people's uh, minds so that we can hold the government accountable and actually have some action here. But we hear um, that it's potentially, potentially good news around the corner, although we've had our Hearts broken on this. We've been disappointed in, in the past. So You know, another aspect of this, which is difficult for folks to rationalize, wrap their minds around, is Chelsea Manning being released for uh, her role in all of this when uh, 
Julian Assange is still writing in prison, getting the pardon from uh, Barack Obama. Julian Assange yeah, not getting sense. the same. The inconsistency there is all over I mean, the, the even place. The, even if you think it was a, the, the crime was taking the material, it right. was the bigger issue rather than the platform that publishes them. Right. And again, that is not that should not be considered a crime. It is standard journalistic practice. That would be like going after um, uh, a mainstream media organization for the Pentagon Papers or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's and it, I, I don't like this tendency that um, sometimes occurs, and sometimes people in the mainstream media do this themselves, where they say, well, we are journalists, so we get journalism privileges, and what we're doing is journalism and it ought to be protected, whereas this outsider with white hair from Australia who and it doesn't have a credential to do journalism so when he does it it's just spilling state secrets or something right. uh, there's i think that attitude kind of is that maybe it's a vibe you pick up on I think that's sometimes, right. I think that's right. It's a kind of an anti-establishment journalism sure. bias. But the First Amendment makes no differentiation, doesn't say, oh, if you're a these privileges only uh, only are protected if you're a journalist. That's not a defined term. It is, it is for everyone. Yeah, so we're optimistic, and it's not just us. Um, Julian Assange's lawyer, Jen Robinson, and his brother, Gabriel Shipton, who we've had on the show here, mm -hmm. gave an interview earlier today to Sky News saying that they are, uh, they find the news to be, quote, encouraging. Um, it does feel like there's a certain kind of momentum that's building around the news itself. I saw Yanis Varoufakis, former Greek finance minister, also weighing in. It might be the case that if this seems plausible that this is going to happen, it might create its own momentum to kind of force Joe Biden's hand. I certainly would like to see that happen. If And if this all kind of spirals from an off-the-cuff moment from Joe Biden that might have been purposeful, but given Joe Biden's history, mm -hmm. might also have just been one of his quirks or gaffes, then even even better um, that there could be a happy accident that comes and, off and keep of in uh, mind, Joe Biden. The, the legal, this, the case is in such a place now where he has to be, the, the U.S. government is seeking to extradite him to bring him to the U.S. So it's, the U.S. is doing something, act it's not like, He's in prison here in the U.S. and we're hoping or waiting for some pardon where inactivity on the government's part just keeps the situation the way it is and maybe there, it's easier for the government not to do anything. Like, the U.S. government has to actively and is seeking to act actively extradite him. So if they just, they could just back off that effort and, and allow him to return to Australia and, and that would be a, a resolution. So I think that maybe makes it more hope that they just back off because mm -hmm. they have to actively mm -hmm. kind of continue pursuing this instead of just saying, well, he's in prison, we're not paying attention, that's the way it is. Yeah. He's and in, it, he is in prison, but not yeah. in a U.S. prison. And according to Assange's brother, again, Gabriel Shipton, 90% of Australians want Assange to be returned back to Australia. This is not at all a divisive issue, the way that at, at some point had kind of become in, in the United States mm -hmm. because there was a little bit of a, 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 a Me Too cast that was also put on Julian Assange. I remember AOC was asked about uh, what she felt about whether he should be free in an interview back in, I want to say, 2020. And it felt like she had succumbed to the pressure that a lot of people had succumbed to to not talk about it because they weren't sure if he was a bad guy or, or not, right? Those allegations had kind of superseded the underlying um, espionage allegations that had such negative implications for the world of journalism. Hope, now it seems like that fog, all of that kind of misinformation, frankly, and nothing that. ever came of it. But it's a pattern that we see in these sure. kinds of stories to try to discredit people who are under uh, attack. Sure. Um, and now uh, it's just interesting that none of, of that exists. speaks for itself, even if yeah. there was some truth right. or something bearing out the underlying of course. allegations. Of course. Um, but it did, I think, scare a lot of people away yeah. from talking about it. So it's heartening to see that at least the Australian public is really united uh, around the importance of bringing Assange home. And we'll let you know if there are any more developments on this Stick around, we're rising for you coming up next.